forever, my love, till death do us part. I think we always knew that that wasn't the end of it, that Rattling Bones wasn't a one-off. I think it started out that way, but we enjoyed it. It's the whole, enjoyed the whole experience so much. I think we just knew well, that... Most of the experience, most not all of, of it. it. Come on. Yeah. Up that mountain to meet you, my love, till death do us part. When we first wrote Till Death Do Us Part, we actually said straight away, I think this should open the record. Yeah. And we sort of decided from that moment that that was going to be the opening song and that was going to sort of set the tone. And obviously, you know, we are married, so we have said those <laughs> words to each other. Well, Wreck and Ruin um, obviously has been closely tied with Wreck and Ruin. They were both sayings that have been around forever. I think it's just about, you know, digging through your own yeah. baggage every time you make a record, you know. Yeah. And then you try and we put it all away. We have to dig through and... each other's baggage <laughs> when we um, make yeah. a record together, though. That's so new. Yeah. <laughs> So the idea came out to go have somewhere to go, like a little retreat where we could go for a couple of nights. And we started heading out to a little cottage. I guess it's like a little shack, isn't it? A little cabin. And we would go out there with the baby, with the poet, and um, spend a couple of days at a time writing intensively and then come home and be real world people and then go back yeah. and intensely write again My for a couple My mum would days. look after the other two kids. It's a really great place, like beautiful, out in the bottom of the Hunter Valley and there's no one around and it's very secluded and very quiet and chilled. And a bit too it's quiet a, for me. And sitting on the porch out there at the back of that hut, you know, looking at the mountain mm. and it kind of occurred to me then that, um, oh yeah, I could kind of easily just do this. Even though it is specifically about our lives, I think a lot of couples can probably relate to that, where sometimes you'd just like to go, hey, I just want to swap all of this for a quiet life. We could be the talk of the town tonight Carry home your shoes in the morning light Or we could just stay here a while Wrapped up in the quiet Through the making of this album, it was really, we were on our own time, weren't we? we it was yeah. really like we were locked away from the rest, rest of the world and we were just doing things at our own pace. And, um, you know, we would record a song and then instead of just going straight into the next song, we would go down to the creek and we would go fishing or something like that. So we'd get, Shane would get on his motorbike or something and he'd go off for a ride and we'd, uh, you know, I'd either jump on the back and he'd drop me off down at the creek or something like that. Bit of a breastfeed in between, you know, <laughs> with the baby. So it was just like we were on this, uh, you know, just on our own time and, and, you know, so it sort of became these rusty shoes. The sh all the shoes were gone rusty while we were trying yeah. to make this record. And rusted shoes is kind of like the companion piece to Quiet Life. I got me some rusted shoes I got me some rusted shoes Been singing the hot rain blues And I'm going nowhere I got me there was a real emphasis on spontaneity, this record, and with what everyone played. It wasn't a, a matter of working things out and fine-tuning things. It was all about that spontaneous um, instinct or gut feeling. My name is Adam. My name is Eve. I was the first man to live and breathe. God made the I don't think there's any symbolic kind of connection with us being married with it being Adam and Eve, right? I mean, I don't know if that story ended that well anyway. No. <laughs> we love the use of the religious imagery. We did in Rattling Bones a lot too. It becomes more like a tool in the songs we're writing, I guess. And I mean, it, you know... both of us were brought up in... Um, <coughs> 
I, I guess, religious kind of households, you know. Yeah, so we certainly have that to draw yeah. on from our childhood. Um, it's not like we're, you know, getting it out of a book. You know, this is something that was part of our lives when we were growing up. Um, but it's not something that's a massive part of our life no. now. It's just that I, I think often um, you, you draw on those sort of things more when you're being creative than you do in your day-to-day -day life. Or, you know, maybe you're more conscious of it. the first